What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and show where Graham Gius and Matthews break down all the original content they watch on the WWE Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the October 10th, 2022 edition of Raw Talk, being hosted by Jackie Redmond, Matt Camp in the studio, also joined by uh, Peter Rosenberg as the special guest analyst for this episode. Despite the many commentary changes and the announced team changes made to Raw, SmackDown, and NXT in the last week, no major changes reflecting on Raw Talk, though instead of Kevin Patrick and Sarah Schreiber doing the interviewing, it might be Byron and Kathy Kelly going forward. I know they're the Raw you know, interviewers and whatnot. Um, Byron Saxton was not on the show. That doesn't mean he won't be on Raw Talk in the future, but all the interviews done on the show backstage at Raw this week, uh, at least on Raw Talk, were done by Kathy Kelly. Byron was on Raw, but he wasn't on Raw Talk. So I think that's a bit of an upgrade. Jackie Redman, Matt Cam still hosting the show from the studio. Unfortunately, um, they're fine, but like the whole studio setting, I'm not a big fan of. I thought the way they filmed the show originally was great, but I realized that was during the pandemic era and you can't do that way. You can't do it that way every week. But anyway, Kevin Patrick, who will be missed as the backstage interviewer on Raw Talk, is now the new voice of Monday Night Raw as the new play-by-play commentator for the Raw brand. I thought he did a decent job this week. And then Sarah Schreiber being replaced by Kathy Kelly. I don't really know where Sarah's going from now, from here. Uh, going forward now, I'm not really sure what happened to her. From what I understand, per Fightful, I believe she's still employed there, but she's just been reassigned to a different role. What that is, I don't know, but she will no longer be on Raw Talk as Kathy Kelly took her spot. And honestly, I see that as an upgrade. Sarah's fine, um, but I think Kathy Kelly is a lot better. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of Kathy Kelly here on Raw Talk. So they start the show by replaying the DX reunion that ended Raw on Monday night before running down the biggest headlines from the very newsworthy season premiere edition of Raw. Um, Also recapping Bailey's loss to Candice LeRae, a bit of an upset there. Backstage, Kathy Kelly interviews Damage Control. Um, Bailey says they're still very much in control, no pun intended, uh, despite the losses at Extreme Rules and on Raw last night. They mention LeRae got lucky. LeRae got lucky with that win over Bailey, Bailey says. Uh, Dakota Kai says, just let her keep coming for us. Let her keep coming for damage control because we will knock her down and beat her up every single time. Back in the studio, Peter Rosenberg says that Bailey wasn't wrong when she mentioned that she's two days removed from a ladder match and that she may not be 100% for this match, which is why she lost. But she does, or rather Peter does call it, a very big win for Candice LeRae, probably the biggest win of her entire WWE career, um, especially as someone who has never held singles gold in WWE before, including NXT. Uh, Matt Camp says that Bailey will bring up, regardless of the losses in the last few days, she will continue to boast about the fact that she was the last woman to beat Bel Air. Um, in recent memory, she pinned her in that six woman tag team match at Clash of the Castle. So she'll probably keep gunning for the championship despite losing twice in the last few days. Not exactly sure how that's going to work out. Um, as far as the DX stuff goes, Peter Rosenberg says it was cool to see them and calls it one of the best Raws in years. And honestly, they use a lot of hyperbole on this show. Uh, a lot of hyperbole. Why, why the fuck did I say hyperbole? That's just stupid. I didn't even write that in my notes. I don't know why I said hyperbole. Hyperbole. They use a lot of hyperbole here on Raw. Uh, on Raw Talk, rather. Um, he may not be wrong, though. I thought it was a very good show. I'd really have to think about it. But it was one of the better Raws in recent memory. I will give them that. Uh, Jackie says that she wants the Mysterio drama to end for different reasons than I do. Um, she just doesn't like to see the father-son combo fighting. I want it to end because it's been going on fucking forever. And not just the Mysterio shit, but like the Judgment Day involvement. I feel like Ray and Judgment Day have been feeding for what feels like 10 fucking years. Like it started even before Triple H took over. Um, That's why I want it to end. But they are playing it well with the whole dynamic and the crowd booing Dominic and getting behind Ray. It has been well done so far. I will say that much. Um, They recap Ray Mysterio's win over Chad Gable and Dominic getting physical with Ray afterward. Backstage, they interview Alpha Academy. Kathy Kelly catches up with um, with Alpha Academy. Chad Gable says that Raw was a clown show this week backstage, kind of largely referencing DX being there and the cussing and how he doesn't like him. Otis is mature. He shouldn't be hearing that cussing, which I thought was great. And he, th- he said Alpha Academy will turn things around for the better. This was short, but this was great. Chad Gable, Chad Gable's a fucking gem. The guy's awesome, so I thought this was a really fun interview. Uh, From there, they replay the OC return on Raw attacking Judgment Day, the return of Gallows and Anderson to Monday nights. Uh, Don't really care much myself. I won't go into great detail about it here, but listen, it makes sense. They got a good reaction. Um, It sets up a logical match. Where you go with them from there is the question. And all this talk about, oh, it adds depth to the tag team division. I mean, I guess, I mean, they've held gold in WWE before. They're just not any fucking good. They're not interesting. Their matches aren't that good. 
on their own. I don't really give a fuck. Um, we'll see what, where they go from here and what happens and whatnot. Rosenberg, after they talk about the OC return, he says that he regrets not being at the show for that moment. He loves the good brothers and whatever. Uh, calls it an awesome moment. They also play the Wyatt video that played on Raw. Um, that weird cryptic video kind of promoting Bray for SmackDown. Not the teaser video, not the not the commercial. It was like the legit video that aired for Bray during Raw. Um, they also recap his return and talk about how great that was. They recap the Brock Lesnar return as well from Raw. And uh, Rollins beating Bobby Lashley for the United States Championship. Backstage, Kathy Kelly catches up with the new U.S. champion, Seth frickin' Rollins. Um, he congrats Kelly on returning. He congrats himself on becoming champion. It's a lot of congratulations going around here. Um, he says that while Bobby was playing checkers, he was playing chess, and he needed to be healthy. So he's been in the hospital, he says, for the last two days, knowing he needed to be healthy for this United States Championship match. Took advantage of the situation, and now he's champion. Um, it was a really cool moment for him, he says, because as someone else mentioned on Twitter, he has a lot of history at the Barclays Center. Like, I forgot completely that he won the U.S. Championship there the first time back in 2015. He won the tag titles there with Ambrose back in 17. Um, he's had a lot of great moments there. I think he won the Intercontinental Championship there as well, the second one at SummerSlam that year is, or in 2018 as well. So he's had a lot of great moments at the Barclays Center. Um, a lot of that having to do with SummerSlam, but what he references here was the fact that he had his first match in that building, one of the first very one of the very first shows in the Barclays Center, that being TLC 2012, The Shield, The Shield's in-ring debut against Team Hell No and Ryback. He specifically mentioned that match here in Raw Talk. He mentioned Team Hell No, he mentioned The Shield, and he mentioned fucking Ryback, which is hysterical. Um, he mentions it's a great match, go back and watch it on Peacock, which he's right, it is an amazing match, one of the best of the year. And then how he's celebrating this moment, he's going to celebrate the same way he did the first time uh, when they had that first match at the Barclays Center back in uh, 2012 with beer and pizza in by doing a sing-along, he says. Uh, back in the studio, Matt Cam talks about Rollins' strategy and praises him for being smart and opportunistic. Um, he also does like Bobby challenging Brock because, you know, he knows Bobby can deal with Brock or rather with Rollins another time. Uh, Rollins let him revel in that moment. Bobby's coming for Brock. He wants revenge, and it makes sense. So to close out the show, they also promote Johnny Gargano, Los Lotharios, Road Dog, and Gabriel Iglesias, who's a bit random, but he is a WWE fan, and he's cool, uh, for the bump on Wednesday for anyone who cares. Uh, so that was Raw Talk in a nutshell for October 10th, 2022. Good show here, if only for the interviews per usual. Uh, the Rosenberg analysis, I don't really give a fuck about, but um, we got to hear from Rollins, we heard from Alpha Academy, we heard from Damage Control. The Damage Control stuff, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of on the majority opinion at this point. I like Damage Control, I don't really have as much of an issue with their booking as some people, but they have not been booked the best. Um, they're kind of doing the same, same shtick week after week at this point, like interference finish and complaining and it's kind of the same shit most weeks. I mean, I guess you could say that with most stables, but I don't know, kind of getting old and they're also on Raw Talk a fucking lot, but the Rollins interview was great and the, um, what was the other, oh, uh, fucking Chad Gable with, uh, Otis, Alpha Academy being on the show was awesome as well, so. I'll give it a thumbs up for those reasons alone. Thank you guys for checking out my review. I appreciate it. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for more daily content. And that's about it. Have an awesome one, guys. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.